Yeah, well, it's 11 a.m., so um, I'll go ahead and start now if you don't mind. Are you all ready? I'm ready. <laughs> all right, great. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our first ever Humanities Heart to Heart Live. I'm Kathleen Quo, and I'm a program manager for Nevada Humanities, which is our state's affiliate for the National Endowment for the Humanities. We create public programming for our state that shares and amplifies the stories, ideas, traditions, and experiences of the diverse people of Nevada. I currently work to curate our newest program series, Humanities Heart to Heart, which is a series of essays and multimedia presentations reflecting on what it means to be human during this time of pandemic. My hope with Humanities Heart to Heart is that reading, watching, and listening to the new contributions we share every week will create opportunities for connection between the writer and the reader and allow for moments of learning and positive self-reflection. When you come to our website and engage with our pieces, I really want you to come away with a better sense, a perspective of who we are as Nevadans, but also who we are as humans. COVID-19 may make it seem like our worlds have shrunk and contracted, but I hope that as you continue on with this program, you'll see that your worlds are instead expanding and that we can find solidarity with one another in our shared experiences, but also learn from those perspectives that are new to us. So I'm very excited to introduce our first ever Heart to Heart Live guest, Sapira Chirk, who is a Las Vegas-based artist and instructor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas Department of Art. Sapira wrote the piece, Dancing Together in a Pandemic, for our program. And I'm gonna ask her now to tell you all a little bit more about it in case you haven't had the chance yet to read it on our website. Sapira. So yeah, thank you for coming. Um, I see a lot of friends and coworkers and colleagues, thank you for coming and listening to me yabber at you. <laughs> um, so I am currently involved in a project um, called How They Do in the Time of Quarantine. And basically the premise is um, I combine dancing, dance still stills of um, dancers performing wherever they're quarantined. And I take those stills and I combine them in a composition and pas de deux is traditionally a ballet term meaning the step of two and it's basically a duet uh, of dance if you will which is really difficult to do now that we're in quarantine um and yeah that's basically the premise of the project and the piece that i wrote specifically was about the inspiration and kind of my personal thoughts and feelings of of going through a, 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 a personal health um, crisis and experience the quarantine kind of back to back. Um, so I'll go into a little bit more detail if you haven't read the piece. Um, so I was diagnosed with diabetes in December and it's a lifestyle disease. You just have to manage your diet, your exercise, but it was a shock to me because I'm young and healthy and, and um, so having to really change my life um, and in every aspect of my life surrounded uh, was like surrounded by food and like my enjoyment of eating what I want. Um, and, and, and so all that had to change. Um, so I was going through that and then we were quarantined in March. Um, before I go into that, sorry, I have to like backtrack. My work has always been, uh, I've always been interested in the experience uh, through the body, so how, how we interpret experience after like a, a, a physical experience. So dance has always been something that really inspired me. Um, it is like, it is experiencing or expressing life through movement. And um, I came across the term how they do, I was not familiar with this term, I was doing a, um, a commission for a dancer and um, I came across this term and I was contemplating on how um, how do people come together and, and make art and create when they're apart and can they do that through like a completely physical medium um, where you really have to be in the same room and so that was kind of how the piece began to evolve and when I was going through my lifestyle change and when quarantine happened everybody had to adapt to this new lifestyle of this new living living through isolation um and it really made me feel like those 
experiences really paralleled each other. There was a lot of similarities. I didn't know anybody that I, I had like very close contact with that had the disease and had to change their lifestyle. I didn't know how to, how to live, how to prepare my, my meals and my daily routine. I had to change everything. And it was really similar to the, the changes that everybody went through. So I equated them to everybody was diagnosed and they all had to be quarantined. And that's basically the piece. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's ongoing, right? Um, you mentioned yeah. that it's going to be, is it next month in August that you're exhibiting it in, in yes. Arizona? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are a few more pieces that um, I have to finish, but dancers from all over the world had contributed. So I'm really excited. There were over like 40 dance videos. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be a lot of paintings that are still going to come out from the project. So with his paintings, how many have you made so far? Um, I have about 18 that I really like, so a few more. I can't tell from the submission. So when people send me images, you know, obviously they're, they're like computer screen size. How, mm -hmm. how large are they in person? They're 18 by 24, so they're not that big. Um, this is about 18 by 24. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you use um, ink, right? Like a yes, uh, the alcohol ink? Is that what it is? I actually have some samples because I get this question a lot about my work. It's, it's all, I'm an ink artist. So traditionally, um, I actually learned Chinese brush painting when I was younger. And I when I was, I lost yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Um, I grew up in Hong Kong. So it's something like if you were interested in art, you probably took lessons. Um, but um, in graduate school, I really, kind of played with the idea of the tradition and then I wanted to make it contemporary and like meaningful. So I was thinking of, actually it has a lot to do with like my um, immigrant Chinese American identity. Um, so this is like the Sumi ink that I use and also I bought some little ink bricks. Um, so if you're not familiar, these are like ink sticks that you add a little water into the ink stone and then you grind out the ink. But the ink that I usually use is a mixture of um, uh, water soluble and non-soluble ink. So I use a mixture of like, I consider this like more, more of my Western art education, like these calligraphy inks. And I mix it with these Sumi ink and I can create like this texture that you see in the artwork. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I think that's just what I really gravitated to your art the first time I saw it. Um, it was actually online at the at the program gallery because I wasn't able to go there in person for the Margaret Are You Grieving exhibit downtown Las Vegas. And I just remember being so mesmerized. Like there's just something about the way mm -hmm. that um, like it contracts and expands, you know, when it's when it's all dry. I was yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more. Like you're talking about. Um, sort of turning to art, right, and creative expression during this time. And I feel like we, we all have, um, like, I've been crocheting way more and needle felting. Um, mm -hmm. So did you, so this was inspired by sort of your experience, how to do in a time of the quarantine, right? Mm -hmm. How did you, I guess, how did you even reach out to people with, you know, with a, like, did you have like a dance community in mind? Like, who were the Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I actually just started so I, I work with the the show it's going to be at Vision Gallery it's a solo exhibition and and part of the reason I wanted to do it was that way it, it's more collaborative where I can also showcase the the videos of of dance um, and it was really easy for me to just put out a call saying please come participate your your artwork will also be displayed at the gallery and um, I just posted it in in call for dancers <laughs> website and I was like really I think I was really lucky to have to, to offer them hey, your your work will also be included in the exhibition as well mm -hmm. yeah I just love that this is a global project um, there's something about this globalness you know I think sometimes you know like as you said we're sheltered in place or we're, we feel these moments of isolation while we're at home 
and not able to safely go out and meet people, yet we're able to reach out to people all around the world and just feel a sense of togetherness and connection at the same time. Yeah. So that's I, what I loved about your project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was really, when it all happened, when quarantine happened, we, I was really focused on like, let's spend money locally. Let's like really strengthen the local community. Um, but then, but then when I started working on this project, I realized like, Hey, I can connect with people around the world that are really going through very, very similar experience all at the same time. And I don't think there is a, a period, there are very, very few occasions, at least in my lifetime and in my experience where we globally collectively go through something together that's so profound and, and changing. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned that, you know, you, you came from Hong Kong originally. Are your parents still there and your family? Yeah, my mom is still there. Um, she was supposed to move, but she's afraid to travel. She's in her seventies and it's, it's, um, and we, we briefly talked about it. It's, it's really, for me, it's scary. Cause she's, she's an, she's an elderly lady. She's yeah. by herself. Um, she has a lot of family, but it, being so far, it's not like a, a, she's over in the next state where I can drive over if she needs something. Yeah. So there's definitely like this heightened <laughs> anxiety um, with travel and, and, and being able to take care of somebody you care about. Yeah, no, I definitely empathize for, so for those of you who don't know me in this video, um, my, my parents are from Taiwan and they're living there right now. I was born in the Midwest near Chicago, grew up there the first 22 years of my life. And um, they moved back to Taiwan a few years ago and they come back every once in a while to see their grandkids and you know, my brother and sister, we were the only ones in the States. And my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer a few years back, a really aggressive form. So he had to seek you know, a lot of different kinds of therapy and it was really scary. And one thing that was consistent is that he was getting treatment in St. Louis where my brother currently is. And he was scheduled to come back in March. And um, you know, this is way before anyone knew it was going to happen. And so they decided it was safer to, to cancel that flight and to rebook it for July. Well, it's July now, and I think things have gotten worse. So they're still in Taiwan, which is safely a, a very safe and I think a, a good place to look at for examples of how to deal with the coronavirus. But yeah, you're right. There is this heightened sense of anxiety not knowing when you can see your you know your family again your your parents um mm -hmm. so yeah I, I understand how that <laughs> can be really scary during this time but you know one thing that I find is that um I feel more connected to my family um we didn't used mm -hmm. to text all the time and now we do um I downloaded this app called line uh, L-I-N-E, just to, to talk with my mom, who's discovered selfies and stickers, and, which is terrifying, but, you know, it's, it's very cute. Um, and so just, like, speaking of stickers, it's the other kind of stickers. You mentioned that you have, like, a, is it, like, a, a paper planning <laughs> uh, account that you do, uh, in addition to your artwork? This artwork. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's been really fun, and, um, I definitely connect a lot more. There's more time to spend online now. And so that community I do connect with every day. I post daily planning videos, which is like, sounds really like silly, but um, it is something that is consistent. That is like a, a hobby. And it is something that is like really soothing to, to have a, to have a plan for your day, even though like all our plans change. Um, I think my boss Marcus mentioned he settled into his corn routine and this is my corn routine where like <laughs> I'll show you I planned every day with like a ton of stickers and it's pretty <laughs> and, and fun yeah but it's been it's been really nice to connect in different ways and I think back to your point about your parents learning how to use like selfies and stickers <laughs> it definitely forced us to learn a lot of new things definitely especially with teaching I've never used discord but I'm using discord for teaching now and it's been working out really well so um it did it, I felt like it's like it's a connection in a different way and it allowed us to learn and experience in a different way and like the time like we just have so much extra time which is great for artists you know we just we are always trying to balance work demands, life demand, home life demand, and then finding time to make work. 
So, yeah. Yeah, so you're using Discord, you're not using Zoom or is this like in tandem with Zoom? I'm using um, Discord for lecture and group work and then um, Canvas, which is the um, learning platform that UNLV uses. So I use them both together. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love that mm -hmm. everyone's just only discovering these new ways of being together during this time. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's it's scary to have to adapt and learn these new technologies, but I think it's really heartening to, to see people at least trying and yeah. you know, finding new ways to, to just innovate during this time. Mm -hmm. So for the people in our audience, I know we have a few, um, like I said at the very beginning of this video, if you want to, you know, chat with us um, in the comments or if you want to send us any questions, um, I think we have a few minutes left. Like, I just love for you to feel like, you know, you're in conversation with me and Sapira. Oh, thank you, Jen. <laughs> so, I don't know, Sapira, can you see that comment by uh, Jennifer McKenzie? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, that is definitely the, the purpose of the project. And, and like, even I haven't shared any of the dance videos, but a lot of them do have to they're like physically occupying a very small space. So I can't wait for the, the show to come together and we can share more of the videos. I've shared a few, but there's a lot of just really interesting way the body interact with the space. Yeah. Do you have plans for, you know, post, um, like post August with this project? Do you have any new ideas of things that you would like to do or explore? I know you have to teach this mm -hmm. fall and you're teaching right now, but. Yeah, um, I am, um, so there's two new works that are coming to the show, but maybe I haven't thought that far ahead because I'm still producing. Yeah. But the other work is called Aligned Parallel. Um, and it, it uh, talks about how um, trauma physically alters the body, physical trauma. Um, I, uh, aligned Parallel is how scar tissue uh, are formed. So regular skin cell are like a crisscross pattern, but um, if it's, if the skin is broken and the body's trying to repair itself. It's a completely different thing. Um, and they, the cells are lined parallelly because it's a faster way to seal up an area. Um, and I found that really interesting. I, I equate that to like, like metaphysically going through like emotional trauma or, or any kind of experience, you are diff you're a, a different person afterward. You And like the scars, you're, you're physically different. It, it, it almost permanently alter you or you learn in some way. Um, and the paintings are on Duralar, which is like the semi-clear plastic uh, paper for water medium. Um, so I paint uh, one figure on one side and the other on the, and another on the other side, and they both have very similar scars that they share. Um, because I, I feel like when you go through something that are similar, you, you automatically understand another person's experience. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be working on. It'll be an installation in the in the same show in August at Vision Gallery. And then okay. yeah, we have a question from Stephanie Gibson. Thank you. You ask, um, uh, Sapir, I see you're influenced by traditional brush painting. Um, are mm -hmm. there any other influences in your art? Yeah, I mean, like, um, I, I am in love with like abstract expressionism. You can see this is like, not very characteristic. I, I usually have a lot of figured, figures in my artwork, but this is one of my favorite. Um, I draw influences from everything that I basically visually consume, and it doesn't have to be um, a specific genre or artist. Um, it could be, I'm obsessed with Sailor Moon, so like I I have that in the back of my head. And at some point it does come through in my work. Um, earlier I was obsessed with, it always comes through like obsession. Um, I was obsessed with polymer clay miniatures. And so I was making like a bunch of tiny pink dicks and I would <laughs> leave them all over the place. Um, and yeah, and just just whatever the, the moment that I'm visually like that's vi like something is visually occupying like all of my thoughts and 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 time yeah I don't know if that makes sense 
I hope that does. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's so funny. I think now that you mentioned Sailor Moon, mm -hmm. I can't, now I can't disassociate that from your work, all the, all the <laughs> transformation poses. That's amazing. I love that. Well, thank you, Jen. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that comes, yeah, and like dance, I was like really into looking at like just dance video, how, how bodies were moving. Um, it's whatever like grabs my attention. Mm -hmm. So Gloria asks, where else can we follow and support you? Oh, thank you, Gloria. Um, you can follow me at Sappy Chirk. Um, that's my Instagram and I'm most active on Instagram. Yeah, and you have your, your personal website as well, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll, it'll be in the Instagram profile, so. Great, well, um, unless anyone has any other questions, um, you know, thank you too for everyone who's commented and said all these really, you know, nice and supportive things. Um, uh, I thank just wanted you. to thank, thank you, Sapira, for, you know, being our, being our guinea pig. You know, you were <laughs> one of the first people I asked. You had no other um, examples to look at, you know, really when you're writing this piece. So you kind of did it on your own. And then you're also our first Heart to Heart Live guest. So I'm just really grateful for your, your patience <laughs> with all these, uh, with all these things. And I really. Well, not at all. It's been like really fun and it was like really challenging for me. I think I mentioned um I was born in Hong Kong so I've always struggled with English and this is like the first piece that I've actually written that I didn't need it like a whole bunch of edits from people so <laughs> so thank you for the opportunity and thank you for letting me come on yeah of course all right so for um anyone who joined in late um this video uh, will be recorded or it is being recorded not only will it be on our Instagram account where you are now but it will be shared, um, I believe, on our website, and we'll update you um, with that video. So for those people who don't have Instagram, because I want, I really want to make sure that Humanity's Heart to Heart is, you know, accessible to everyone. It, it's all about, you know, our collective experiences right now and how we can learn from one another. And Sapira, I just love that your work deals with the body. I feel like, you know, that's, I mean, it literally is like such a physical thing that, you know, we can all relate to and sort of experience it so yeah. yeah thank you everyone thank you for coming <laughs> all right well tune in next time we're um i don't know if this will be a weekly series we're going to do our best to do this um every week if possible but yeah, you know, we'll continue to update you uh through social media through our email newsletter if you don't already receive it um please sign up and until then, you know, we're, we're posting uh, submissions, new ones every week on Monday on our Nevada Humanities program page for Heart to Heart. And again, just keep an eye on social media. So thanks, everyone. Thank you.